three, two, one, and lift off. <laughs> Salamike. How to blow up your deadlift. It's a party here at Third Street, Sacramento, California. I just hit a 605 pause deadlift. The sea bass was too busy working. I tried to get him here, but all the dude does is work. So uh, enjoy the cell phone vi uh, footage of that. PR for sure. And we're talking about how to increase your deadlift. A lot of comments on our journey. I'm obviously on a journey to pull a conventional lifetime PR, although we're hitting many PRs on the way, which is a good sign. Um, we got Coach Avi in the house and we'll give you some of our best tips. Let's get it. like a macro view programming deal. We got some technicalities within technique and we'll get into some if you guys like, comment below if you like more technical stuff. But I think actually a lot of technique work, it's gonna be a little controversial, let me explain. Technique is overrated. I think that everyone thinks that like, oh, if I twist my ankle and feel my adductors and my glute hinge and I wedge better all these cliche ass terms, if you do that, you're gonna lift more weight. The truth is if you do more reps, more work, and train for five years consistently, those reps, you'll find your best technique. Yeah, you should focus on it session to session, but to me, that's the, that's the micro. Within each session, I have an intent or one cue I'm trying to improve upon and work on, but with macro view, what I think will help most people immediately, or maybe not immediately, but within the first cycle, is cycle, is, uh, Frequency. Now, we always think about the deadlift as tearing, uh, tearing us down and the CNS is always burnt out and it's so hard. But the truth is, the evidence proves that the squat and the deadlift have the same fatigue on the body. The difference is a lot of intermediates and advanced lifters, but a lot of intermediate lifters deadlift significant amount more poundage than they squat based on technique and years of training, etc. So yeah, if you're moving 500 pounds in the deadlift and 300 pounds in the squat, the 500 pounds is gonna tire you out more. Duh. But we adapt to the stimulus we give ourselves. So if we're sleeping well, eating well, and we slowly ramp into deadlifting twice a week with maybe even a third variation, like a stiff leg or an RDL, posterior day, we're gonna see twice as much progress as if we were to deadlift once a, once a week. Now I'm not saying we can max out both those times. You know, my pull is probably mid high sixes right now. <clears throat> One of my days, although I'm tapering, is well below 500. And then my other day is like 500, 600 pound range. So you don't have to go balls to the wall on both days, right? Um, if you deadlift around 500 pounds, one day is gonna be 315-ish and below, and the other day is gonna be four mid fours. Look at this sexy guy behind you. I don't think it looks bad. I think he looks good baggy. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. That's the new premium tee, huh? I think it looks good like that. It makes, it makes your, uh, what do they call it? Your yoke, like your chest traps, his yoke looks big. But yeah, frequency. I think you can squat two to four times a week. You can probably deadlift two to three, and benches should be three to five. That's gonna be the key for most people to get in the reps, get in the practice, get in the volume, and build muscle over time. Building muscle will allow us to get stronger. Back in the lab, and it's that time. Y'all been waiting, Mike, when's the next collision? Where's the next collision? Oh, is that a new t-shirt I see? It's right now, 3SB.co. Um, we got an out of this world, outer world drop. Um, everything's kind of space themed. We got the main logo, which I'm gonna show y'all, um, but I'm really, really excited. Sometimes the timing of this 
gets a little frustrating for me because we're a small team. You met the whole team in, in different videos. If not, we got a vlog coming up where you meet the whole team. And a lot of it, we're trying to build truly premium stuff. I don't want to just no hate to anybody, but just how I do things is sometimes different. And so I don't want to just take a logo and print it on a shirt and dish it off to put money in my pocket. I want to create something unique. I want to create something custom. I want to create something durable, something that, that really builds on our keys of, of community and culture and, and build it with quality clothing. Now, if you guys don't know, um, a huge industry is just blanks. And there, again, there's nothing wrong with it. Some of it's really high quality, but companies will buy hundreds of thousands of t-shirts and then they'll sell them to brands like us, streetwear brands, apparel brands, doesn't really matter, your local gardener, and then you'll print their logo on it and you'll sell them or wear them for your employees. Um, cut and sew is typically when you go inch by inch, thread by thread, fabric by fabric, and decide exactly the custom piece you wanna to put together. Um, and I'm super excited to announce that this is our first drop that is 100% cut and sew. So a lot of times built stuff, 80%, um, you know, and then sometimes we would use a blank tee or a blank hoodie along the way, but this one's top to bottom, cut and sew, every inch chosen. Um, and so our brand new premium tee is what we're rocking here. If you guys have rocked with our hoodies and our sweats in the past, um, we got a new design, new fabric, but the sweats and hoodies will fit the exact same. We've got a zipper, still fits the same, same comfy coziness you're used to, but the premium tee is what's brand, brand new. So it's a heavyweight. Again, if we're going to oversized, Oversized is like a fitment. It's not actually mean size up or size down. So it's still order true to size. It's just a boxier fit. This one's a little premium, nice thick top, double stitched everywhere we rock, kind of an old school vibe to it. A heavier fabric, um, but still for the durability of it. And then we got three designs on these guys. These are XLs. I'm about, you'll see all the pictures. Me and Seabass are about 200 pounds, 5'10-ish, and we're rocking an XL. Um, Kyle's 6'5". He's rocking an XL in most things. And then Avi is 5'1", 125 pounds, and she's rocking a small. Um, just to give you guys a general idea of, of how things fit. But I would say they fit true to size um, in terms of what you should order. Um, if you want an extra baggy, which sometimes I do, I'll wear a 2X. Um, but that's it. We're live right now. Get it while it's hot. I am almost guarantee it's going to sell out. So 3SB.co, I'm going to get back and finish up this workout. Abby, if you had to give one big deadlift tip, what would it be? Why do you have to build it up so much? There's too much. There's honestly too much. I'll give two small ones since I don't have one big one. Um, I didn't prepare for that. I have two small ones to give, and it's something that I've been talking about more recently with people around me. So number one, grabbing the floor with your feet. I know it's probably been said a lot, and... Um, you hear it with like squats as well, and that's how I know how to apply it the best. But I started doing that in deadlifts as well. Um, and it's not spreading the floor, it's not screwing your feet into the ground, it's just grabbing the floor with your feet. So it, my feet kind of does this, and I feel more of my pressure in my, kind of like my toes and my heels a little bit. And essentially you're kind of just creating an arch in your foot, and like creating more stability there, and feeling the ground more. It helps me engage like my, the rest of my lower body, I guess. Um, versus passively just laying your feet down, like plopping it down on the floor, you know what I mean? There's one. Second one is looking up. So very, very small thing. Um, doesn't, hey, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but give it a try and see if it helps. Um, so just looking upwards instead of like looking down. So what this does is it helps you kind of, you definitely just want to be pulling straight up. You know, and if you're looking down towards the floor, it's somewhat, in my, in my experience, easier for you to pull yourself forward and not notice it as much. But if you're looking forward and you drive and your hips rise too fast, you kind of feel that um, more easily. Like basically, your stability, your balance, um, is better felt when you're looking straight up. Kind of like obviously, uh, something that Della Panda says a lot is like. De pulling against what is it? Oh, an invisible glass wall in front of you. So, because you, you want to go straight up against the wall, you don't want to like lean forward into it. Yeah, you don't want to smack your face into the glass wall. So, this helps to like keep um, not only like pulling up right, but like keeps my hips in the right position. So it keeps it from like rising forward or rising higher uh, than my am I having my torso collapse? I feel like the thing with these cues are is that they're really small and they're it's. It's like, oh, easier said than done type of thing because like it seems like an easy concept, but the way that you apply it can make a world of a difference. So if you're like, oh yeah, I already do that. Oh yeah, I already do that. Um, just reconsider how you're doing it and like whether you're doing it 
uh, effectively or like optimally. Ladies and gentlemen, how to blow up your deadlift, man, 3SB.co. Thanks so much for the support. Um, if your size is out, I can't help you. You should have joined Discord. Join the Discord, they get exclusives, uh, discounts, and first look at everything. I appreciate you guys for all the love, man. I'm really excited about this collection. More to come, so stay tuned with 3SB and good company. Big, big 2023 plan. Um, hopefully this deadlift's chugging along and hopefully this video helped you with your deadlift. If it does, like it, subscribe, turn on noties, share it with your friends. We over me, be a part of something bigger than yourself. Driven by culture and community, man. We out.